made another one of these videos where I look at the answers to 10 multiple choice questions. So this one's on the Alkanes. The PDF with the 10 questions on is in the description uh, to the video. So just click on the link and you can get the uh, questions that way. So the kind of things that's looking at are physical properties of alkanes, the radical substitution mechanism features. There's a question on combustion analysis. There's a few questions on structural isomerism, um, molecular formula from a skeletal formula, and key terms, so things like allocyclic, that sort of thing. Okay, so if you want to have a go at those, just pause the video and then play it when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so question one, which of these four alkanes has the highest boiling point? So you'll see I've written down how many carbons each one's got. That'll, that'll help us rule some out fairly quickly. So 2,3-dimethylbutane has got four in the main chain plus two for the two methyl branches, so six carbons altogether. 2-methylheptane, main chain of seven plus one methyl group, so eight carbons altogether. 2,3,4-trimethylpentane, main chain of 5 plus 3 um, CH3, so another 8 carbons. And 3-ethylpentane, so 5 in the main chain, plus the 2 for the ethyl group, so 7 carbons. So the highest boiling point is going to be one of the 8 carbon molecules, because you've got more electrons than the other two. So there's the skeletal formula. Um, so we're looking now for the amount of branching, okay? So the more branching um, a molecule's got, such as a hydrocarbon, the um, the sort of weaker the intermolecular forces are because they have minimum, less surface contact. So that one there will have the lower boiling point, but the easier one to boil. So that one there has got the higher boiling point. So moving on to question two, we ha had to identify the propagation set that would feature in the radical substitution mechanism between butane and chlorine. So the first two we can rule out straight away because they're not even propagation steps at all. So the first one, that's an initiation step because we're going from that stable chlorine molecule to two radicals, two free radicals. So it's not that. This is kind of the opposite of that, so you're going from two radicals to a stable molecule, that's a termination step, so it's not that one. So these are kind of in the format of a propagation step where you've got a non-radical and a radical making a non-radical and radical, so you've got the same going on there. Now what I always say to my students to help them sort of get these sort of questions right is, um, a halogen radical will always strip a hydrogen out. Um, of the uh, the molecule that it's reacting with, so you can see in this in this step D here or this equation D, we've got HCl. So to me, that's the that's the clue, that's the sign that that's the right answer. Okay, this doesn't happen. Okay, that chlorine radical uh, doesn't um, swap, if you like, with um, one of those hydrogens which it's looking like it's doing there it actually stabilizes itself and forms the HCl. So that was the answer and that one's wrong. Okay, so moving on to question three, which of these would produce the most or the greatest volume of carbon dioxide at room temperature and pressure? So I've just done a kind of very um, abbreviated combustion equation there. So these, this represents our different alkanes here. CXHY reacting with oxygen. The important thing to know is that whatever X is, in the um, hydrocarbon, we get that many moles of carbon dioxide. So one mole of this would generate X moles of CO2. So if you think about it, um, one mole of C2H6 would make um, two moles of CO2. Well, we haven't got one mole, we've got 0.4 moles. So basically we just double, we would double that 0.4. So that one there would make 0.8 moles of CO2, so this would be 3 times 0.3, so that would be 0 0.9 moles of CO2, 4 times 0.2 is 0.8, so there's another 0.8, and um, 5 times 0.1 is 0 0.5. 
Now we don't need to work out the volume, okay? We know that that there, that's gonna create the greatest volume of carbon dioxide because it's created the greatest moles of carbon dioxide. You would just multiply by 24 dm cubed to get the volume in dm cubed. But anyway, that was the answer and these were not the answer. Okay, so moving on to question four. How many, um, how many structural isomers are there with molecular formula C5H12? I think was the way the question was written. So the way I'm going to process this, I'm going to just draw the skeletal formula for all the possible um, structural isomers, and then that'll give me which number that is. So if I've got five carbons, I can do a straight chain, one, two, three, four, five. So something like that, so pentane. So that is a structural isomer with that molecular formula. If I now shorten the main chain to four, so make a butane main chain and put my one carbon on as a methyl group. I can put it there or there, it's the same thing. That's a second one. So that's two methyl butane. If I shorten the main chain again now down to three, I've got two carbons. Well, they've got to both go on there. It's 2,2-dimethylpropane. Uh, if I put if I put one of them on there, I would have just generated that. Okay. So the answer was three. Okay, so we're moving on to question five now. So we've got to decide which is um, which of these alkanes has got the lowest boiling point now. There's been a question about the highest boiling point. Um, these have all got the same number of carbons. They've all got eight carbons, so they've all got the same number of hydrogens. So we can't base it on the number of electrons. Remember, we ruled a couple out with electrons, um, with number of carbons, sorry, in the previous question. So these have all got the same number of atoms. So basically it's down to the structure. So you'll see I've drawn the skeletal formula up for the four alkanes. And for the lowest boiling point, we're looking for the one that has the most branching because it, it can't, um, the, the surface contact's not as strong. The intermolecular forces won't be as strong. So less energy is needed to overcome the intermolecular forces. So it's actually this one here, that's got the lowest boiling point. Um, and obviously these, would all be higher. That would be the highest if you're interested. So moving on to question six, technically nothing to do with alkanes. I've put it in because when you combust an alkane completely you get carbon dioxide. So that's my sort of tenuous link to get this in uh, into this set of questions. But still something you need to know. So uh, how many oxygen atoms are there in 88 grams of carbon dioxide? So to work out the number of particles of things that you've got, atoms in this case, it's the number of moles of the thing times Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to 23. So we can work out how many moles of carbon dioxide we've got. So that's 88 over the MR of carbon dioxide, which is 44. So uh, moles, moles of CO2 is 88 over 44, which is two moles. So one mole of CO2 has two moles of oxygen atoms. So two moles of CO2 will have four moles of oxygen atoms. So there's four moles of oxygen atoms. So all we, now, all we do now is just multiply four by Avogadro's number and we get this answer here, 2.41 times 10 to the 24. The calculator value I've still got on here 2.408 times 10 to the 24. So obviously that rounds to three significant figures to that. We've got the question number seven. So which of these statements explains the low reactivity of the alkanes? So we'll just take each one in turn. Electron repulsion between sigma bonds. Not that, because that's, that's used to explain shape of molecule, not uh, reactivity. So not that one. Free rotation around sigma bonds, that's nothing to do with reactivity. Um, so I'm not going for that one. The high carbon-carbon bond enthalpy, well, when things react, you've got to break the bonds to generate uh, the atoms. So that is definitely linked to reactivity. So we'll just put that as a possible at the moment. The high polarity of the CH bonds, well, that's nonsense because carbon and hydrogen have virtually the same electronegativity. Their bonds are actually classed as non-polar, so that's definitely not right. So that is the right answer, C.
Moving on to question eight now, what's the molecular formula of this cyclic alkane? So we see they've all got seven carbons, down to the number of hydrogens. So we've got two on these carbons here. Uh, remember, each carbon can form four bonds. So that these carbons are forming two bonds to carbons. So there's two sort of spare bonds, if you like. They're going to hydrogens. Uh, these here, they're making three bonds, so there's one hydrogen on each of those. And then at the end here, there's going to be three on those, okay? So three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it was a third option there. The other way you can think about it, and this is useful for much more complicated molecules, and you don't want to have to faff around doing what I've just done there, um, so you know that the general formula for the alkanes is CNH2N plus 2. Well, every time you put a ring into the structure, you have to drop the number of hydrogens by 2. Okay, So if you've got 7 hydrogens, you would have not 16, you'd have 2 less, so you'd have 14 hydrogens. So that was a quick way to do that one. Likewise, if you've got double bonds, every time you put a double bond, in um, a molecule, you have to drop the number of hydrogens by two. So that's quite useful for more complicated molecules than that one. Okay, so moving on to question nine, we've got another um, boiling point question, highest boiling point. I think it's the second one of these we've seen. But notice everything's been put into structural formulas. So we haven't seen that yet. Um, so the first thing to establish is, does any one of them have a different number of carbons and hydrogens? Well, they're all the same. They've all got seven um, carbons. So you can't base it on number of atoms, number of, number of electrons. So it's down to their structure. So when you've got a CH3 group in a bracket, so you've got there and there, not there because that's CH2. So that's just the chains continuum there. There's, there's a, a branch there, um, branch and branch. Okay, so CH3 in a bracket indicates branching. Okay, so highest boiling point is down to the least amount of branching. Okay, because then the, the, the molecule can get really close together and close pack in, in the molecular forces are the strongest. So that's actually the answer. Okay, um, because that's just the straight chain of seven. So that's just heptane, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's that CH3. That's that CH3, let's check it out and see it. So these five CH2s are just one, two, three, four, five. It's just an abbreviation for the formula, okay? And we've, we've got three in there. I think I've already mentioned that, okay? So that was the answer. Okay, so we're moving on to the final question, thankfully, number 10. How many allocyclic structural isomers are there of C5H10? So this question is testing your kind of understanding of that term, that key organic term, and obviously structural isomerism. So allocyclic, these are um, aliphatic rings, okay? So in other words, they're just not aromatic rings. So in the case of A-level chemistry, that's just they don't contain benzene rings. So we've got to have a ring, um, structure. So we've got five carbons, so the obvious thing to do first of all is just to draw. So that's definitely a structural isomer of that, C5H10. And then if we take a carbon out of the ring, so make a ring of four, and that gives us one carbon for a branch, we can put it on any of those, which is a methyl, so that's a methylcyclobutane, that's another one. And then if we take it down to three, we've got two carbons to play with. We could put one on there and one on there. Instead of putting them there and there, we can put them on the same carbon. So there's another one. And another thing you could do is you have a ring of three again, and you could have a branch of two. So you have an ethyl branch on. So that's the final total, one, two, three, four, five. So there you go. So well done if you're still here, and I hope that was helpful.